Welcome to Wander Mode, a podcast that wanders through topics such as entrepreneurship, traveling, and mamahood. As a teacher turned entrepreneur and a mama to one, I am sharing my tips and tricks to maintain harmony in a multifaceted life. Let's wander. After interviewing Caitlin Cunningham last week and being inspired to adventure with kiddos, I could not help but make today's podcast episode all about why I adventure with my kiddo. It is truly such a rewarding experience, but alongside my stories, I will be sure to share the products or the things or the processes that make adventuring with your kiddo doable. Because I know sometimes we're sitting out there and we hear people say, hey, go do this. And amazing as that sounds, you also then question, well, how? How am I supposed to do that thing? So first things first, why embark on adventures with a kiddo? Well, similar to Caitlin, I believe the benefits are truly boundless. Just like the young adult author Jacqueline Davies said, every journey with kids is an opportunity to teach them about the world, about others, and about themselves. This isn't just about creating lasting memories. It's also about fostering a deep connection with a little human. It promotes physical activity. It teaches resilience. It enhances social skills. And it nurtures this sense of curiosity and wonder in your kiddos. But perhaps the most magical part, at least to me, is witnessing the world through their eyes. It's that sheer excitement, that unfiltered joy, and that boundless imagination that comes out when you are out adventuring. Speaking of boundless imagination, if you need a concrete example of how this comes into play, on our trip to New Zealand with our three-year-old, we ventured out on a hike. And we were climbing this steep portion of the trail, and kiddo was getting tired. So she asked to sit on this really big rock. But as she approached the rock, she squatted down and said directly to the rock, nice to meet you, whale. She then proceeded to climb on its back and pretend that she was riding a whale. Now, it is important to note that these moments that expand their imaginations, these situations that promote physical activity, these experiences that allow you to witness the world through their eyes, these adventures, they can happen anywhere. Camping in your backyard, camping at a national park, hopping on a plane and going to a different country. But I would echo what Caitlin said and say that what makes true adventuring with kids unique is your decision to be disconnected from the busy world around you. That means leaving those chores behind. That means ditching the to-do list. That means stopping the endless scrolling on your phone and simply choosing to be present a hundred percent in the moment. Each of us that is responsible for a little life needs to figure out how to carve out time in the busyness of life, not only for the benefit of your kids, but for the benefit of your relationship with your kids. And that's going to look different for each of us. I loved that Caitlin shared that in order to navigate her husband's limited PTO, She's going to learn how to manage the trailer on her own so that she can get it to a destination, which takes a lot of time, so that he can join and take fewer days off. That is creatively solving for how to integrate these adventures into their lifestyle and the limits of their lifestyle. For me, that is carving out and planning adventures that involve faraway destinations, which means that we're taking more time away from our work from home setup. So that means that I'm working during naps. That means that I work when the kiddo goes down for bed. It is not as productive for me as being at home in my office. That is for sure. But it allows us to achieve our goals of seeing countries with our daughter while we can 
And I will not be at the end of my life regretting that decision to find a way to make it work, to find a way to leave behind the busyness, if not just for a little while. So I know by now that I have convinced you to adventure with your kiddo, right? I I am pretty persuasive. (laughs) But I know that you're also probably thinking, well, what are the practicalities of adventuring with a little one that will make all of these supposed amazing experiences go smoother? And there are no guarantees with any experience, right? It depends on the day. It depends on your kid's mood. It depends on how much sleep they got. But there are a handful of things that I want to discuss that will hopefully help you adventure smoothly and cause you to want to do more adventuring. First, it is all about the timing. Whether you are road tripping like Caitlin or you're flying like me, Time the travel as best as you can to allow for naps in the car or sleeping on the plane. It won't always work out perfectly, but it can help tremendously. Funny enough, my kiddo doesn't nap much on car rides, but you get her on a plane and she will conk out for hours. Like on a recent seven and a half hour flight overnight, she slept five and a half hours of it, which was great. Second, with kids three and under specifically, carriers, strollers, those little legs get so tired on any adventure that you're doing with them. Don't have an adventure cut short because you're tuckered out from all the carrying. Baby carriers, toddler carriers, strollers, scooters, anything that is going to get those little ones the distance, anything that will allow them to finish a hike or have a full day in a park, Even at the age of three, our kiddo does want to hike more, but I found a carrier on Facebook Marketplace that carries up to 60 pounds, and we are then able to give her a break as needed, and that pays off when we would have loved to have hiked five to six miles, but she can only make it two, okay? So having an alternative option to carrying them is essential. Third, Food and hydration. This might seem like a no-brainer, but snacks and hydration can double the energy of a kiddo. Last weekend, we had her up on a ski hill with us, and when she needed a break, we sat down and snacked. When we were riding the chairlift, that meant I was breaking off bites of a granola bar to give her. I also wore a hiking hydration pack so that I could easily give her sips of water as needed. After even five minutes of taking a break or spending five minutes to get that snack in her, her energy spiked after that snack or that sip of water and she was ready to go again. Or consider when Caitlin sat in the back of their vehicle with the kiddos to practice safe eating in the car. That can often buy you 30, 40 minutes of entertainment and comfort for your kiddos. You don't need diaper bags full of stuff. We're talking a few bars, a few snacks, a water pouch, and that will go a long way. Fourth, adventure-ready clothing. Dressing your kid for the conditions of the activity. I'm not actually trying to state the obvious here, but rather I'm wanting to emphasize that I feel like a lot of us overdress our kiddos for certain adventures. Let me use the same skiing example. It was a warm day to ski in northern Minnesota. It was 40 degrees maybe. There were adults that were just skiing in long sleeve shirts. Yet I had her in long underwear, a full jacket, a full snow pants suit, a hat, helmet, all the things. And when we stopped for lunch, she was sweating. Be mindful to dress them in layers that are easily removable, but an overheated kid will deplete their energy too. And that is what I recognized going into lunch is that we just had too much stuff on. I was trying to protect her from the potential of cold conditions at the top of the ski hill, which is smart to do, but I didn't account for the fact that it was still going to feel rather warm up there and that she's also exerting a lot of energy to be able to do what we're doing. And so therefore, I needed to have been more cautious on this one and checking her body temperature often. Fifth, versatile products. Versatile products for sleeping, versatile products for potty training, transport, and more. There is a world of products out there that can be endless to sift through, and it can be super hard to determine what to buy 
based on reviews or to know, am I buying this product that's going to be used one time or 10 times or a hundred times? The products that I am about to share, I am not earning a single dime from talking about them. I am just a mom sharing the stuff that I have purchased and used way more than I ever could have imagined, not just even with adventures, but even at home. So what are the products that have been used the most on our adventures? For sleeping, it's the Hiccupop products. The toddler inflatable bed by Hiccupop has traveled to multiple countries. It has traveled to grandma and grandpa's house. It has been used in my office when we have a lot of family staying. It is awesome. And they stand by their products. I had one of them where it ended up getting a a tear in it and it would no longer inflate. I sent the product back and they replaced it. No questions asked. They stand by their products. They're durable. They last under toddler usage. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) And then also by Hiccupop, they have these inflatable bumpers that you can put on larger beds in order to keep kids contained from rolling off. We use them on her bed at home. And then what I do is I deflate them and I bring them with us when we're staying at lodging in which she has her own bed. So if it's a larger bed, I can then just inflate the bumper, put it on there, and it will keep her from rolling off. They are awesome. And they compact down to make it very reasonable to travel with them in a suitcase just along with all the rest of her stuff. The Oxitot Travel Potty, which I have talked about on my podcast before, is insanely helpful with a kid who is potty training. We have used this travel potty in porta potties at apple orchards. We have used it in plain bathrooms when she didn't want to use the option that was available. We have set it up in public restrooms on the floor when the toilet seems too intimidating. We have set it up on hiking trails when she has to poop versus pee. We have used it in the back of the car, on the side of the road, during a road trip, when we are miles from a gas station or a rest stop. Because at home, we have a floor potty in her room to use if she were to wake up in the middle of the night or first thing in the morning. We've also then put it in the room that she's staying in on our travels so that she still has access to a toilet so that we don't have to go back to using diapers. As far as transport goes, we have loved the Baby Zen Yo-Yo Stroller. This was perhaps the purchase that I made that I had the most angst over because there are a lot of travel stroller options out there. But what it came down to for me is that you can carry it onto any plane and it fits in the overhead. So then you don't have to gate check it and wait for a stroller with a sleeping kid in your arms. You just always have your stroller. There is no waiting for it to come back up from the bottom of the plane. It's compact. We can navigate towns and buses and shuttles and trains and airports, or we could even keep it in the back of our car for quick access. And it's just easy peasy. The bag also has backpack straps to bring it along with you. That stroller has had a ton more use than even like our Bob jogging stroller that we utilize at home. Those are the most used products, not only on our adventures, but also in daily life. And they are worth every penny, but you know how frugal I am. So I always recommend sites like Facebook Marketplace first to snag a deal or even going to secondhand stores that specialize in kid products. The sixth consideration when adventuring with kids is entertainment. And I have actually found a lot of great inexpensive options like the Melissa and Doug puffy sticker books on Amazon or like dry erase books for tracing to work really well for stuff that I can pack in the car or pack onto a plane. But also you can grab some toys or other things at secondhand stores for kids and then only pull them out when you travel. That way they're not as used to these items and they're exciting. What I do in order to not get overwhelmed by stuff because we travel often is that when I am picking up some new things to use on travel, I always pick the same number of things at home to then donate or sell so that it's a direct swap. She gets access to the thing while we're traveling, but then something else is going that we have at home that's not used as much. That way I'm able to kind of keep my minimalist mindset and 
reduce the amount of stuff that we have in our house. Another super easy option is to just take some crayons or markers or colored pencils that you have at home, stick them in a little like grab bag and grab some printer paper. You can do a lot with colors and a piece of paper, tic-tac-toe, mazes, Pictionary, origami, the options are endless. These entertainment options should obviously be age appropriate, but also compact enough to bring on your travels, which is why I like any of the options that I listed above. And and really, those are the ones that we use most often. They're great for travel, whether you're in a car or whether you're on a plane. Finally, you need to check your mindset. Did you actually leave behind your task list? Did you fully check any unrealistic expectations at the door so that you aren't frustrated when things go awry? Successful adventuring is all about preparation, flexibility, embracing the unexpected. And I guarantee you that if you enter these adventures with an open mind, it will be impossible to be disappointed. It will be impossible to not be able to find at least one benefit or one positive that came from adventuring with your kiddo. So because I've done such a good job at convincing you to go out and adventure with your kiddo, I'm giving you a task. I want you to drop me a line or a DM on social media, and I want you to let me know how you adventure with your kiddo and some of your go-to tips when it comes to successfully wandering this great big world of ours. I can't wait to hear what you have to share. If you wandered to this point in the episode, thank you for listening to the Wander Mode podcast. Please leave a review and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Wandermode Co. Reach me by email at julie at wandermode.co. Until next time, wander on.